Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to do a game involving pirates. Here's the setup. The Dread Pirate Nash captures 10 gold coins and must split them amongst his crew. There are five total pirates. The Dread Pirate Nash himself, and then these other pirates named 2, 3, 4, and 5 for convenience. The rules are as follows. According to pirate tradition, the captain first begins by proposing a division. If at least half the pirates accept that offer, then that is the way the gold pieces are going to be divided. But if less than half accept, then the captain walks the plank, the next in line becomes captain, and the process repeats until a proposal passes. So essentially, Nash begins the game by proposing how much gold he and pirates 2, 3, 4, and 5 will get. All of those pirates vote. If at least half of them accept that offer, then Nash survives, but if less than half do, then Nash must walk the plank, and then number two becomes the captain, and number two proposes a new division amongst two, three, four, and five, and if at least half of them vote yes to that, then that's the division, otherwise number two has to walk the plank, and number three becomes the captain, and so forth. So. Pirates have preferences as follows. The pirates most prefer preserving their lives. So if they die, that's just the worst possible outcome and they don't really care about anything else. They're just really upset that they're gonna die. So they're most interested in surviving. Survival is the primary goal of these pirates. But given survival, they wanna maximize their share of gold. So as long as a pirate's going to survive, you would rather have z uh, one piece of gold to zero pieces of gold or two pieces of gold to one piece of gold and so forth. And then finally, given survival and a certain amount of gold, they want to maximize their rank. So suppose that the second in line pirate could get five pieces of gold if he votes yes to the Dread Pirate Nash's original offer, but if he votes no, he'll still get five pieces of gold in the next offer, but now he'll be the captain because Dread Pirate Nash has walked the plank, so essentially he has moved up in rank and maintained his survival and maintained his amount of gold, so he would rather do that than vote yes on Nash's original offer and get the same amount of gold and still survive, but be ranked lower than he could have otherwise been. So this question is quite extensive. There's a lot of stuff I could be asking, but I just want to know one thing and one thing only, and I want you to find the offer that Dread Pirate Nash proposes. So that's the first offer of the game. There might be more offers that happen later if the Dread Pirate Nash's offer gets rejected and he has to walk the plank, but I'd mis I'm just interested in knowing what the first offer is in the game. And I'm actually curious about what your prediction about this is going to be. Nash begins as the captain. Will this game end well for him? So two questions, basically. Will he survive? And if so, how much gold will he get? So if you're watching this on YouTube, go to the comment section just below the video and answer those two questions. Guess, will Nash survive? And if so, how much gold will he get? And I'm curious to see if your predictions will match what happens in equilibrium. So once your prediction has been made, let's get to solving this game. Now, the lesson I want to draw out of this is that we can solve a lot of games through backward induction, but the trick is figuring out how to apply the method. So when I went through that example, it didn't necessarily seem like there was backward induction really easily available here, but in fact, you can, if you think about it really hard, uh, figure out a way to use backward induction to solve this game. This could be written as an extensive form game with a game tree, but we're going to try to avoid drawing out that game tree just because it would be extremely long and, and complicated to do, and I wouldn't be able to fit that on a slide. So instead, we're just going to think about this as efficiently and as smartly as possible. So let's suppose that the fifth pirate was the only pirate left, so essentially everyone else had to walk the plank. Then if that's the case, the fifth pirate is going to give himself 10 pieces of gold, and he's going to vote to approve that offer because if he if he votes down himself, then he dies and he doesn't want to do that and he wants to get as much coin, as many of the coins as possible, so he'll just take 10 for himself. So given that's the case, we need to think about what number four's equilibrium offer will be. So essentially we're using backward induction here. We started at the end with the fifth pirate's offer, and now we need to think back to what would happen the step before with the fourth pirate knowing that if it goes to another step, that's what's going to happen with the fifth pirate. And actually, we don't really need to think about that quite yet because with only two pirates there, you need to have a majority, a greater than a majority vote against an offer for the pirate to walk the plank. So essentially, as long as four votes yes to the offer, then he can't be killed because that will split the the votes 50-50, right? So even if number five votes no and number four votes yes, number four survives. So 
Number four essentially can't die as long as he votes for himself, which means he can award himself all ten gold coins and be able to survive this. So he preserves his survival, he's the top-ranked pirate, and he gets ten pieces of gold. So that's really his best possible outcome. He can't do better than that. And like I said, he can't be killed off because he's just going to vote yes for this. He's not going to let somehow uh, himself vote no and number five vote no and have him die. So number four in equilibrium, if it gets down to this offer, will just give himself all the gold and leave five with nothing and that proposal will pass. So now let's think back to the next step back, which is what happens when player three has to make an offer. So what did we see before? Well, if it goes down to the next offer, if essentially number four and number five vote against him, then what's going to happen is that number five is going to get zero uh, gold coins. And that's not going to be very good for number five because he wants to maximize his gold. He can't die in this game. We've seen that. So he's only interested in maximizing his gold at this point. And if he votes against number three's offer, he'll get zero pieces of gold, which is as bad of an outcome as he can get almost. Um, at least he'll be second in command, but he still won't have any gold, and that's just going to make him quite upset. So what can number three do to survive and get number five to vote for him? Well, obviously number three is going to vote for himself, and he only needs to buy one more vote, because if he can get two total votes, then he doesn't have to walk the plank. It's only if number four and number five conspire against number three that number three has to walk the plank. But you'll notice that if number three simply offers number five one gold coin, then that's going to be sufficient to get uh, player five to vote with player three. The reason is that if player five were to vote against player three, then player three would walk the plank, number four would become captain, and number five would get zero pieces of gold. So getting one piece of gold is actually going to be better for uh, player five than it would be to vote off player three. So given that, player three can accept all of the rest of the coins, get nine coins, and leave player four with zero. And what's going to happen here when they go to vote is player three votes yes, player five votes yes, player four votes no, but guess what? That's enough for player three to survive. Player three walks out of there with nine gold coins. All right, so now we got to take it back another step, keeping in mind that if it ever reaches this stage where number three becomes the captain, then number three gets nine gold coins, number four gets zero, and number five gets one. Well, it's going to be pretty easy to see here that number four, pirate number four, can improve his payoff if he gets one gold coin. So if number two votes, or excuse me, proposes one gold coin to player four, that's actually going to be sufficient to buy player four's vote, because if player four were to vote against that, essentially uh, number two, three, excuse me, numbers three, four, and five vote against the offer, they could kill player two. But if player four does conspire with three and five to make number two walk the plank, he winds up with no gold coins. We saw that here. So one gold coin is enough to get him to buy the vote. And given that, player two doesn't have to give anybody else any gold coins because he's obviously going to vote for himself. He doesn't want to die. And if he doesn't want to die, then that's going to give him votes for number two and number four, which is enough to ensure his survival. He can't walk the plank if he has 50% of the vote. So he can give himself nine gold coins, leave player three and five with zero and just give one to player four player two and four vote yes player three and five vote no but guess what that's enough for player two to survive now finally keeping in mind that if it ever gets to this stage that's the payoffs Nash can just propose players three and five one gold coin apiece the reason being is that if three and five were to vote against Nash in this offer if say two three and four were to conspire against him or three uh, excuse me three, I just went through two, three, and four, so now it would be if two, four, and five were to conspire against Nash, then they would end up with zero gold coins because that's what happens in the next stage down. So Nash can buy off their votes with one gold coin apiece, and because Nash doesn't want to die, he'll vote yes for himself. So he's going to get three votes, one from himself, one from three, and one from five, which means that's enough to survive, so he can just give himself eight gold coins and leave zero with uh, two and four. So what was the original question? The original question is, what's the first offer that Nash makes? And this is it. In equilibrium, the players can't actually do better than this, with Nash getting eight, player three getting one, and player five getting one. But all the pirates survive. So surprisingly, Nash ends up running away with a great deal, because he gets a vast majority of the coins, he survives, and he's still captain. 
So that takes care of that question. Now, there's a lot of other things that you could do to this game to make sure that what I've said is in fact a step game perfect equilibrium. I didn't go through that step by step, and that's something that you can do on your own to just verify that what I'm saying is correct and that in fact this is the equilibrium proposal in the first game if we look at it through sub game perfection as we have in the past. Um, so I invite you to go through this game once more on your own just to make sure that what I'm saying is right and to just give yourself a little bit of extra practice with uh, sub game perfection and backward induction. But I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you thought this was interesting and I hope now you can see maybe how to analyze games and think about them in different ways to see if you can in fact apply backward induction to what otherwise would be a very difficult game to survive.